Welcome back to section two of personal finance. Today we're going to talk a little bit about income tax and we're going to do something way different this time. Now, there is a reason for this. One is that income tax, if I told you how it worked today, it would be different three months from now. Two years from now, it'll be different again. So all you can do is get some general ideas. But what I'm going to have you do is go through the particulars in this particular section and work it out for yourself for the most part. I'm going to give you some tips and I'm going to send you off on your own to digest some of this. One of the reasons is an experience that I had in particular when I switched from teaching to becoming a computer programmer. So what happened? Well, I started to work in August of that year for a place called Sperry Univac. My assignment was to work with the Mark 86 gunfire control system for the Navy. And once we got all the paperwork done and that sort of thing done the first day for human resources, human resources, about the first or second day, I'm not sure which one it was, I got a whole lot of manuals. And the three of us who were starting were given the task of getting to know what was in the manuals. So what were the manuals about? First of all, we had to know what the Mark 86 gunfire control system was. Well, the first thing we had to know was it was on cruisers and destroyers for the Navy. Okay, that's not too hard but there's a lot of more details on that because it had to do with the guns, not the missiles, not anything else, no mines, it was the gun system. Second, I wasn't actually going to work on that computer program, but I had to know it because I worked on the Mark A6 gunfire control system simulation also known as the Wraparound Simulation Program, or the WASP. Yes, it had that nickname. That was another manual. And we also got a stack of program listings that told us how the program worked. Of course, that isn't enough because in the year I was doing that, it was all computerized by that time. So we also had to know about the computers. So I got a manual for what was called the Yuck 7. Yes, that was the name of it. UYK 7. U for universal, Y for digital, and K for computer. That was the main computer we were going to use for our system. But also, there was an auxiliary system, and that used the 1219 computer, previous version of that Yuck 7 computer. In addition to that, there was another computer, the Yuck 20. We had to know all those and how they worked, and how they worked with each other. Stacks of manuals. I can safely say that those manuals stacked together probably were about a foot thick. The point of all this is sometimes you get some information and you have to digest it. And that is your job for the income tax because this is going to be very personal because you might need to save money by doing your own income tax one day. 
And so what I'm tasking you with is to learn some of the basic ideas. Even though income tax can change from year to year, certain things like gross income, adjusted gross income, and so on, are basically the same from year to year with some adjustments. Well, let's get to it. So here are some of the things we're going to do. I talked about the gross income, adjusted gross income, and taxable income. They aren't all the same. What is the federal income tax? Well, that's the amount that you're going to pay to the federal government so they can supply you with certain, certain amenities, like roads, for example, maybe a loan. In fact, if it hadn't been for the federal government, I wouldn't have been able to go to college. I got an NDEA Act loan. And anyway, to move on, you also should have an idea of how FICA taxes are included. Be able to solve some simple problems for working students as perhaps yourself and tax in general. So what is income tax? It's a part of your income collected by the government to fund the services and programs that affect you. Social Security, all kinds of things are done by the federal government. Most people complain about the income tax, but it actually affects all of us and the people we love. So I hope you get an appreciation for that and are not one of those people that are complaining about paying tax when it actually, in one way or another, come back, comes back to help you. Okay, so how does this work? First of all, let's see if I've got the... Uh, First of all, you start with the gross income and you subtract certain adjustments like savings plans and so on. That gives you your adjusted gross income. That's the first adjustment. With that, you have to decide how much of that is going to be taxed. We take off exemptions, we take off deductions. You can read below here what some of those things are. So the income tax is what you get from the tax computation minus some credits. And some of those credits are things that help defray college costs. So that affects you. Here's an example you can play with and I would suggest you put your hand on the pause button and try some of these yourself. It gives you an example of a single person who had earned wages of 46500 also got some money from his savings account, also won something in a television game show. I'm not, her own, not sure how much you can relate to that. And also, he contributed some to a tax-deferred savings plan. Now, if there's one thing that I would really like to get across to you from this chapter and this course in general is to start some kind of a savings plan now. Even if it's only a dollar a week, start some kind of a savings plan, whether it's stocks, whatever it is, something reliable that can accumulate money for you. Start now. Now, in addition to that, he has a personal exemption of 3800 That was when this slide was made. A standard de deduction of 5950 And there was interest on his home mortgage, so obviously he owned his own home. He paid property taxes, state taxes, and also gave some to charity. 
using those, and we're going to show you how to do it, find out what the gross income is. That's all, all the money that's coming in that you were hoping you were going to be able to use before the taxes came out and before some other things came out, like insurance. Once you've got the gross income, calculate the adjusted gross income and then the taxable income. So how does that go? First of all, the gross income, it's the total income, wages, interest, savings account, game show winnings, tutoring, whatever. Add all of those together and that's your gross income. Now, you make some adjustments. You get a tax deferred savings plan. Tax deferred means you're not going to include that as part of the taxable part. So you take this out of that total. There's your adjusted gross income. So it's down a little bit. And then we've got exemptions and deductions. He's entitled to a 3800 personal exemption. And also, if you weren't single, he would have certain exemptions for his spouse, for his children, and so on. There's also a standard deduction he could take instead to make it simpler. He could also increase his deductions by itemizing deductions if, you've got, if he's got enough of certain kinds of deductions. If it's not enough, then it doesn't make any sense to do itemizing deductions. You might end up with lower deductions than taking the standard. So, after all those are added together, subtract it out, subtract it out, you end up how much of your income is actually going to be taxed. Then you go to the tax rate tables. Which of these statuses, or stati, whatever they're called, which of these categories do you fall in? I think that's, I think that's us. This tells you what the tax rate is, depending on what your amount is. And you get certain deductions, certain exemptions, and so on. As I said, I'm going to leave that up to you because it changes from year to year. I would suggest that trying this by yourself just get a feel for how this works. Maybe you'll get an income that's so good that you can have someone else do your taxes. All the better. But in addition, you might want to know how it goes together so that you can tell whether whoever did your taxes actually did a good job of it or not. So here's a list of a single woman her gross income, a couple of adjustments, and some deductions, getting this adjusted gross income. Then the taxable income, take off the exemptions and deductions. And notice that this person was hoping to take their medical expenses, but they weren't high enough. You're happy your medical expenses have to be a certain percentage of your adjusted gross income before they're worth taking off as deductions. <coughs> as deductions. Excuse me. So there's some calculations for this single woman. Is your adjusted gross income, then you take off your exemptions and deductions. So she's got a taxable income of 42,100. 
that puts it in this tax bracket for that table we saw previously. So according to the tax table, she owes 10% on the first 8,700, then 15% on everything between 8,701 and 35,350, and 25% on everything over the 33,350 gets a little bit complicated. Now, you can follow this on your own. And the final result is that single woman owed $6,055. Now, remember, some of that probably was taken out of her income before she actually got it. So she isn't going to have to write a check for C 6055 that's how much he owes for the year next social security and medicare those help people that are 65 or older helps disabled people dependents of deceased people people with health problems and so on and these are the rates for most of us, 5.65%, according to this year, which it looks like they're using, oops, looks like they're probably using 2018 or 2019 as the year for making these calculations. Notice that some of, some employers are paying some extra for you. Of course, you're self-employed, you have to do it all yourself. Computing that, here's how the rates go, 5.65% on the first 110,000. Over that, it drops to 1.45% of everything over the 110,000. So here's a working student, you, can, you might find this interesting. This person is making some money at a gym, $15 an hour, 20 hours a week. Some of their money is taken out for federal taxes, some for FICA, some for state taxes. Remember, some of those things are being used for you too. If you saw potholes all over your drive on the way to school, You'd be complaining, but that's taken care of with state and federal taxes. All right, so we're getting close to the end. Here's another example you can use with that student. Okay, the weekly gross pay, and that's pretty simple. 10% is how much being, is being taken out of the 300. So 300 is taken out for federal. FICA, 7.65. 22.95 is taken out for that. State taxes amounting to 9. What do you get? After all the taxes are taken out, you end up with 328.05. What part of the gross pay is withheld for taxes? Even here's the total taxes, and then that's what you're being paid. A simple calculation to get that total. And that's it, folks. Have fun. Remember, one of the most important things is. is getting a, an appreciation for how some of these things are calculated and where some of these amounts go to. Some to help you, mostly to help you, and to help others too. Well, as well as taking care of the rest of us, take care of yourself 
Chelsea with 8.3.